What is happening there, citizens of the Reject Nation? It is time to watch Monarch episode dose today. If you did not catch our reaction to episode one, that is, of course, up here on this channel. The channel. Hey, John, how you doing? I am delightful, Greg. How are you? I'm doing well, doing well. Didn't realize two episodes came out, so we're running late yeah. to this. My God. Ladies and gentlemen, please go ahead, roar at that like button or breathe fire, whatever, something that's clever. Thank you to Pepper for helping us edit down these highlights. Also, subscribe, click that notification bell, because you know we're going to be covering the rest of Monarch. Thank you to everyone who has joined our Patreon full length reaction watch along. That's where you sync up with your own copy that is available for our super sexy rejects over at our Patreon page. We also cover several things exclusively over there with highlights and watch alongs included. Ready, John, you ready? I am ready. Enter. Green onions? Just like Godzilla's breath? Oh. <laughs> I guess so. It's an Easter egg. Confirmed. Lieutenant Shaw, reporting is ordered. Green Onions is the name of the song? It's not Green Onions. Is it Green Onions? It's not Green Onions. This is <laughs> this is uh, what I say by Ray Charles. Oh, okay. <laughs> I totally I got like, the song wrong. I think Green Onions has a different vibe. It's part in the reaction. Yeah. <laughs> you couldn't pick a fight with one of them instead of two of our own? <laughs> Love character actor. Chris Overdahl. There's a fight even about. <laughs> I guess I just can't abide bullies, sir. You're a good man. Some of them and me. Oh. What do you think he'd make of you now? <laughs> He's back in the Overlord movie. Some orders have come through. Security escort for a Japanese scientist. Oh, this is when he falls in love with her. Yeah. I lost a man in one of these escort missions a couple of months back. <laughs> An escort mission. To observe and report when and if able, understood? And that is all. Ah. Lieutenant. Dismissed. No. <sighs> My mom is from Manila, guys. Oh, damn, look yeah. out. Fun fact for y'all. Sir, uh, you don't happen to be Dr. Mira. Sexist. Mira? Sorry. You're not Ken Watanabe, are you? <laughs> <laughs> They told me they were sending a military escort, and you're the only one here in uniform. But you got lady parts. <laughs> you don't know science. <laughs> I'm Keiko Mira. Yeah. Keiko, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you must be his daughter? Uh, I'm sorry, I think there's a little miscommunication happening here. Um, let's start over. Yeah. I think my, my penis is confusing me <laughs> with think, what you are. the patriarchy. <laughs> <laughs> and you may call me Dr. Mira. Yeah. Bitch. But a oh, Green Onions Green by onions. Elvis Presley. Yes, love it. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna oh, play. this is the original Hound Dog. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God, what's yeah. her name? Is it uh, Sister Rosetta Tharp? Am I making you nervous? Nope. This is an army jeep and I'm, you know, the army. I've been driving up and down these roads for weeks. I know the way. This is the way. This is the way. This is the way. Okay, then. Starting to get the feeling you don't really want me around here. Maybe your sexism got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty far south for a Russian bomb test, huh? Because it's not the Russian. It's a Titan. Well, they were the wrong isotopes for bomb fallout, and meteorological data shows they likely originated here. The Philippines? Oh my god, Godzilla's Filipino? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Putting you guys on the map. Should get to work. Hit the gas, Doc. Yeah. She's also a race car driver. Damn, this is beautifully shot. Yeah. Catching the disorienting ways of the windy road whilst looking beautiful. wonder if they actually shot in Manila or if they just went to New Zealand. <laughs> Probably New Zealand's cheaper. <laughs> New Zealand or Canada, baby. Oh, now we get the opening credits even more because of the dueling identities. Ooh, uh, see that with their names shifting. They're both Lee Shaw. It's a shame Koi's not here. There's so much duality in these credits. I know, right? And duplicitousness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do I do about my dad and my hot sister? <laughs> <laughs> and what if my other mom's hot? That man plays guitar. He's got a Muto toy. Hey, whose side are you on? 
Is that Muto toy? Did I mistake that? Look like some type of kaiju. Look like some kind of creature, yeah. Maybe it was just like a regular dinosaur. Have they merchandised the Mutos yet? <laughs> <laughs> so many memories of the safe from yesterday. Could have at least closed it up to make it look like they didn't take <laughs> like the secret. Come items. in and raid the safe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ew. The dad has the same exact photos in America, just he's, he's on the opposite side. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a mirror of this room. <laughs> cool. Is this destruction going to lead to finding some type of document that's like, oh, oh, wait a minute. It has to, or an artifact, or a MacGuffin. I always want to shoot one of these kinds of distraught wreck the room scenes. There has been a lot of emphasis on the keys on locking yeah. locking secrets? Yes. <laughs> the key to our salvation? <laughs> Uh-oh. Leland Lafayette the <gasps> third. He's gonna find Daddy Russell. Yeah, buddy. Oh, yeah. Let's watch that old film. There's nothing but Jolly Bee commercials on it. <laughs> <laughs> I was so emotional <laughs> craving chicken. Even it'll be entirely gone and the trail will be lost. Uh, got that. Double time. Your English is very mean? good. It came in handy when I did my postgraduate work at Berkeley. <laughs> Guy just keeps putting saying his foot in his mouth. All the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> Those readings were legit. Washington would have sent half the eggheads at Los Alamos to check it out. Los Alamos. Oppenheimer. You want me to lie and pretend that's not the way things are? Mm -mm. You're telling me you didn't take one look at me, make a snap judgment about who I am the second we met. White people, white guys are oppressed too. It's not the same. Leland Lafayette Shaw the third. Suppose it's not. You got a lot more privilege. I mean, people do make assumptions, but also you get to just kind of do what you, you want. Got, you have better assumptions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty much it. <gasps> the background's now blurred. Do you hear that? It's just some Lieutenant? guy. Lieutenant? It's John Goodman. He made it off the island. Yeah, he ran all the way across the ocean. The Philippines footage. This son of a bitch ruined everything. Oh, Who are you? I'm American. Navy vet. Oh, I'm Shaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got the gun, Swab. So who are you and what are you doing here? Swab. Lieutenant, my name's William Randa. Oh. Again, this just keeps dealing with, like, lineage and legacy. It's a fascinating subject to incorporate here. Yeah. Family secrets. He's the son of Randa. Or is he Randa himself? Isn't John Goodman's name Daniel Randa? Danny Randa. <laughs> Am I wrong about that? I'm blanking his first name now. Like, does he become Goodman in 20 years? <laughs> I'm on a hunting expedition. I'm a cryptozoologist. Uh, what? Studies animals that don't exist. Seems like maybe we're out here hunting for the same thing. Oh, and John Goodman was trying to send footage to his son at the very beginning. And the footage That's never him. got to his son. And now we're watching the grandchildren yeah. uncover it. Okay, yes. Katie, where have you been? I'm sorry. I, uh, I've been calling and calling you. Mom, I'm fine. I'm coming home. The mom is always only over the phone. We yeah. never cut to her. Yeah, that's got to be intentional somehow. Last time you guys, like, I like that the mom's like, where, where have you been? Even though she hung up on her last time. Right, right. I overheard your accent. Sometimes this place can make you feel like you're stranded on another planet. Bullshit, man. I don't trust you one bit. Where are you headed? Look, I don't mean Go to be rude, but I've made all the new friends I can handle for one day. Thing. Young woman abroad runs into a strange man at the train station. And next thing you know, you're buried alive in a coffin somewhere. <laughs> that sounds like a vaguely... I can't imagine that that helps. guy's threat, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Tim. They, they don't come much more harmless than the Tim variety. Have a nice night, Tim. <laughs> I need to talk to you about the files. Oh. What files? I work for Monarch. What's your last name, Tim? You're not in trouble. Not yet. Those files, and they are more important than you could possibly imagine. Oh, boy. I need to make a call. Let's make a call. Let's. 
Oh, he's doing the arm grab. Ooh. Not looking so harmless right now, Tim. Tim Timotei. What's your last name, Tim? Everyone's last name seems super important in this show. Speaker, please. Yeah. Kate. Hello. Oh. Damn, right in the nose. Why don't you just do the whole he's trying to assault me thingy? I said you weren't in trouble. Yet. You said yet. How'd he catch up so fast? <laughs> Look, I swear, we're not gonna hurt you. <laughs> Although <laughs> everything he says contradicts his yeah, actions. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah. Man, the PTSD of this Godzilla event. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Whoa, they really crashed that shit. Damn. Yeah. Nice. Wow, these guys are unscathed. Yeah. Not the hinge shine. When's the last time I answered one of your text messages? You thought that because of your crazy family drama that what happened between us is ancient history? It's my right as a man. Where's an office in Miskito? I do audio not home movies. I told you I was sorry. Apology accepted. I'm sorry too. What's your deal? I want those old computer files we found. Because they're mine. I'm busy. Come back tomorrow. Is she uncovering She's what's really in busy, it? like decrypting all that shit? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. What's her last name? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's related to Brian Tyree Henry. They're both into audio. <laughs> They're both obsessed with this stuff. It's all connected. There's one variable you're not mentioning that it's very obvious, John. Oh, sure. They're both black. <laughs> If you check the security cameras of the traffic lights, you'll see that there was a gnarly car accident. That she's intox inebriated. Yeah. You can just breathalyze her. She called the police. Because <laughs> we ain't doing shit to help you. Mm, citizenship thing, huh? You might be Japanese, but you're American at the end of the day, lady. You go to the American embassy. They'll help you out for sure. Yeah. We get shit done around here. <gasps> I like that exchange. The paranoia. Monarch's listening. Monarch PD. Hmm. I mean, it's complex. Now that I have acknowledged your feelings. <laughs> Ouch. Oh. <laughs> she's so great. I know, she's the best grieving mother. She's got the most heart out of any character. <laughs> oh. All she cares about is protecting her son. I really think the mom's gonna die. She's got the biggest secret of all. She can talk to Godzilla. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She was the one who sent Godzilla to San Francisco to kill their philandering father-husband. <laughs> so you guys are following the radiation, aren't you? I know you're not gonna find what's out there following a Geiger counter. You know, the people of these mountains, they have an oral tradition about a dragon that carves a path of fire across the sky. <laughs> <laughs> a path of ionizing radiation. Oh, no. That's, the, that's what I was going to say. My orders Your are... Your orders are to provide me with whatever My orders I are require. to provide you with operational security, and I cannot do that with our new friend Billy, the jungle hermit hanging around. <laughs> Billy, the legacy character. Just go then. I didn't ask for you, and I don't want you, so... He looks hurt. I'll send someone back with a jeep. She's your commanding officer, man. 
So he's Tom Hiddleston. Yes. Yeah, her guy's John Goodman. The girl's Brie Larson? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we call them MUTOs for massive unidentified terrestrial organisms. I yes. came up with that. Terrestrial. He came up with that. Did you hear that? Yeah. He invented it. Lights in the sky. And whatever's making them has been tracing the same path over and over and over again, going back centuries. My Whoa. comets. No, more like migrating birds. They're animals. These are the tracks of the radiation readings from our surveillance aircraft. Wowie. <laughs> nice. <laughs> it's always satisfying when two maps click together. Like the, the hell did they shoot this? I know. I just I mean <laughs> this is a great travel log. And I do love that even with the foreboding, there's a little bit of wonder, a little bit of the natural beauty. Mm -hmm. What is it? Brachiosaurus. <gasps> oh, damn. Whoa. What is that? This isn't where I parked my car. It's not the shit from Skull Island, is it? No, that's in the future. Skull Island's in the 70s. We're in the 50s. Yes. <laughs> God damn it. Right? Yeah. Some of these I have no idea if they're any good. Oh, he's John Goodman, is what you're saying. Anders Holm is John Goodman. Will Will Randa. Bill Randa. Oh, so this guy is John Goodman that we're watching. In the flashback with uh, with In the fifties. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> no, I got confused too. <laughs> so confusing. I was like, is he his son back home? Because in tw in like 15 <laughs> to 20 years, he's going to be John Goodman. It's <laughs> yeah. a bit different than the one to one you'll get with Wyatt and Kurt Russell. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, wait a minute. How did you do? I want Bill Randa's files. You need to hand over those files. You, your friends, and your mother are going to be in a lot of trouble. Oh, oh my God, you're a menacing one. Just avoid the trouble. <laughs> yeah, you know more than you're letting on. Ah, uh, go find that man. Amazing. Uh, thank you. <clears throat> tea? You like tea? Nah, she knows how to distract. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Shit. Uh, yeah, buddy. <laughs> this guy is good. Could be a countless restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Went down 200 miles west of Pearl in 1943. Pearl Harbor? That's 5,000 miles from here. Oh. Hollow Earth. Spit it back out. You said you study myths, stories. I'm interested in why people tell stories they tell. And finding Bigfoot. I wonder how he becomes a crazy, cranky old man. Mr. Randa. It's an Easter egg for episode one. You are on this ship. Yeah. Wow. Is this what you were looking for? Did you know it was here? Did I know? Maybe. Let's say hoped. Ooh. No, we had something in the water that night. We figured it was a Japanese sub. The whole ship went down in less than three minutes. Who else survived? Only me. Damn. Damn. I'm sorry. I've been chasing cryptids ever since. He really does have a How I Met Your Mother situation going on, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so does that mean that Wyatt Russell is Ted <laughs> and Honor's home is Marshall? <laughs> <laughs> we need our I'm Barney now. how he turns into John Goodman. <laughs> sure, 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 sure. How that one guy turned into Bob Saget, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Josh Radner. Oh, wow. Oh, now you're going to believe... Somebody's after those files. Why don't we just give them what they want? Maybe then they'll leave all of us alone. I can get us fake passports. I want a fake passport. I want my real passport. I know where to go. I know a white man who can help us. Trust me. Come on. Oh, we're going to see Caruso at the very end, forcing us to wait a week. Uh, marketing. 
What is that? I don't know. Oh, cool. Looks organic. It's so scary when they cut to this POV of the camera. I just think something's going to pop right into frame. Oh, oh creepy. Aliens and the thing combined. Ugh. Oh, God. Oh, that's so cool. There are so many. I want the haunted maze of this. When did you say this ship sank? Nine years ago. I think I've seen everything I need to in here. You don't want some samples of this translucent pearlescent residue? They're gonna wind up somewhere else, aren't they? Oh, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> like there's like a rift in time here. Yeah. Once they step out. There's like a cool Cloverfield-esque quality that they've woven into here. That's, yeah, yeah, that I think the, works. Cloverfield nicely. paradox specifically. Yeah. <laughs> the best Cloverfield. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it had a lot going for it until it didn't. I say for the rest of the episode, we just review Cloverfield paradox <laughs> while it plays <laughs> and just rewrite what could have been better. <laughs> oh, Curdy. Konnichiwa! <laughs> Kotarasu! <laughs> Colonel Shaw? Hey, yeah, they Peter. look alike. Yeah, they do. <laughs> What's your name? Kentaro. Randa. You're Hiroshi's boy. And you? I'm Kate. He's a Randa, huh? Yeah. I didn't know Hiroshi even had a daughter. Well, I didn't know he had a son. Turns out he was good at keeping secrets. She's his real daughter. Kentaro... We want to ask you about it. Why don't we, um... Yeah, come on. Let's get some air. I like the little glance he gave to the camera. We want to find out what happened to my father. You tell me. <laughs> right after G-Day, he said he had some place he needed to go. A week later, we were told the plane he was on disappeared somewhere in Alaska. Monarch people and... What, uh, disappeared? As in nobody? No guts or... Ah! Ooh -hoo, ooh -hooh. Hey, what is this place? Oh, this place is what Monarch euphemistically refers to as secure asset management. Uh. So you are imprisoned here. Okay, well, we're leaving. Yeah, you can try, but they're just going to keep following you until they finally get what they want. God, I love Kurt Russell. I know. <laughs> Choke down that mountain of Monarch bullshit about your father disappearing without a trace. Or you can come with me. Or we can get the hell out of here right now and find out what really happened with your dad. So in Kurt Russell. Yeah, you got just about 60 seconds to make up your minds. Oh, he just needed the right catalyst to get the hell out of here. He's been waiting to toss that anklet for He's months. Been waiting for that minivan. Oh. Let's keep it moving. Yeah, they're not going to come out of the jungle. They're going to wind up in Alaska or some shit. Yeah. Yo, whoa, whoa, whoa. Strange sound mix there. Wow. Oh, that's scary. Zion. That is a claw. Whoa. Oh, this mystery is getting good. Yeah. There's your cryptid right there, boy. Hey. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty freaky. I know, oh. really claustrophobic. Is that a Godzilla claw? I mean, it certainly looks like it. But why would he just be attacking the ship? I don't think it's him. I mean, I don't think it's Godzilla, but it's definitely Reptile Claw. Jeez. Oh. Oh, okay, so they are ending up back here. Oh Damn. my god. Oh, run, 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 run. Whew. Oh my, oh my. Oh, there it is, the trick. Oh, oh damn. <laughs> oh, shit. Beastly. It's not Rodan, but it looks kind of Rodan-esque. Whoa, jeepers. That's just out in the open. Huh. Huh. Comment below what creature this is, guys. Yeah, it's gotta be one from the Pantheon. It's that shot of the three of them just like looking over the ridge. Yeah, and you had Randa looking all like, oh, what wonder. Beauty. Yeah. You know what I wonder at when I'm looking up at things? 
where people can get the freshest drips at www.rejectnationshop.com. Yeah, sure. It's like that shop protection oh. services. Like you get some lovely Marvel button down. Yeah. And then also we got a bunch of other teas as well mm. over there. Space Babies of the Galaxy, who influences the influencers and a whole bunch more. And it is one of the absolute best ways to support the channel. Well, wow, this really depends on you knowing John Goodman's character name. Yes, and and, and you know, because the- goddamn, uh, <laughs> he said William Randa, and I was like, okay, and then you know, Bill is one of those names of you could easily lose. <laughs> so you're like, ah. yeah, no, I had to, yeah, in that moment, I was like, is it? Because so lost for a second. Yeah, yeah. Because I, I get confused. I got I got really lost in the timeline there. Yeah, with uh, like oh wait, which one? I mean, you kept you, you kept me on track there, man. No, yeah. it, like it I does. Like, oh, 50, 70, that's right, yeah. Yeah, because I was, because even in the first episode, I was going like, okay, because, because you know, I, I like that they give us the credit of like, okay, we're going to name the years up top and then we're going to let you keep track as we go. There's a fine line between heavy exposition and, and letting the audience but, be smart. But there's there a fine is line a that I am too dumb to take I it. I blame no. show when everyone else is probably <laughs> able to keep up just fine. Well, I, I do think that like, yeah, you know, if we were sitting Sitting in complete silence alone, you know, it, it probably wouldn't be that hard. But but they are throwing a good amount at you and they are jumping back and forth and they are riding waves of tension between the two timelines. So there are times when you are just like caught up in the immediacy of the moment and then you're like, oh, wait, wait, wait. And, and uh, I also appreciate they're going back and forth at times between English and Japanese. So, you know, like there uh, it's I think asking that you process a little more quickly than like yeah. an average show might and i appreciate that uh but what you think of the episode i enjoyed this quite a lot i think this is building nicely on the first one and i was you know i mean th- i think first and foremost like the previous episode we were mostly wishing like yeah I'd, i want to you know like really connect to the characters a bit more but i'm really loving the build of the mystery in the world and the you know lore and all that stuff and here like they didn't do necessarily like crazy amounts of character building but i really enjoyed that much more spending time with the characters and you know especially in the past you know uh, yeah. exploring the situation I, like i thought in this one it, it got to breathe quite nicely of them you know meeting uh uh the scientists and and wyatt russell and then you know kind of introducing their vibe and dynamic and then running into anders Holm out in the wilderness and how that came to be um and well, then you know everything in the present. Well, they did character building in a different way of uh, holding a telos- not a telescope, <laughs> a telescope, <laughs> <laughs> same concept. <laughs> holding a microscope uh, up in in different areas v- uh, during the dialogue. Like last episode, was a little bit more set up, but then you get these little nuggets here of like motivations behind Randa, or or a little bit more subtleties or details. I would say in aspects of the dynamics and the conversation back and forth like when in the past in the 50s when the three of them are meeting each other and you get okay so you get some about uh shaw uh, when he's first introduced bit apocalypse now stylist and then you get um with the i forget everyone's name the, the, the grandma in the past uh oh, I forget everyone's name um, i need to commit her name in particular because yeah they said it a bunch of times yeah she's a very important character by last name thinking it was a guy and yeah 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 so the that, doctor the doctor and then and then of course randa and his past with the war and mm-hmm. and uh understanding their motivation and a lot of times like some of the character building just comes in getting you a little bit more invested in the character build in the motivation itself uh, and and then with the immediate moment of the of the present, or at least the 2015 timeline of the present, th- th- with the mom seeming to know a little bit more than she lets on of the son. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kentaro. I yeah. I am very curious about him, especially because the dad. I feel like he is one of their. He's like the kid of one of them. Who the the dad? Uh, the Kentaro, like part of me doesn't believe that the dad who she came to Japan to find out about is actually his dad. I almost feel like there's some weird thing of like, he's what, like, you know, he looked out for the kid after like Randa disappeared or something. 
Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I, I'm just I'm just projecting. You know, it's it's but they it's just I don't know. There's but something the, that the, seems the implication is that okay. So we're understanding this <laughs> gap here because there's grandparents and grandchildren. That's right. Yes. Right? That's what we're we're going with. And then there's Randa, who's the grandpa, Randa being John Goodman. Okay. Which yeah. is Bill Randa, who we're seeing in the fifties. The the son is the father of the brother and sister, right? Am I understanding that? Am I am I incorrect about that? Yes, that, that, that would that make would be the, the most because yeah, it would be they're both, Randa, they both the have doctors. A, they're, they're both kid. Randa, right? Yeah, both, yeah, both yeah. The fa- both the brother and sister are Randa. Okay, and you're so, right. So then their kid would have Randa as a last name and could and would ostensibly be the guy we've yeah. seen in all these pictures. So the son is like when, when this when Randa in, in episode one and okay, and, and, okay. and uh, Asian doctor lady <laughs> so, <laughs> said yes. they had a kid. That kid is the father who mysteriously disappeared in Alaska, right? OK, yes. Yeah. So <laughs> so I'm going to amend my theory slightly because uh, yeah. yeah, that that all checks out. I, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. And he turned into a full Japanese man. Because well, it's I'm, hard to find a half white, half Japanese actor. Well, yeah, you've got you know uh, uh, Anders Holm and and John Goodman both don't have like especially dark you know like hair or feature. Like, you know they have like brownish hair, but they're not like really dark hair. I like so, Wizards like, of Waverly Place, and for some reason David Henry and Selena Gomez are brother and sister, sure, so yeah, I'll get on board. Yeah, with it. yeah, yeah. yeah. So just this kid who looks just completely one hundred percent Japanese. Yeah, uh, yeah, but. But but now I think you are correct. I am gonna put my you know like bets on your. I mean, it has to be right. I mean, they said they're both Randas. No 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 that. But I'm saying the name would pass down. But I think maybe the the idea is that it's actually Kurt Russell's grandson. These are like Kurt Russell's. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think one of them is Kurt. That was one of the things we were saying in the last episode that 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 one of their kids is Kurt Russell's. There you go. Okay. Yeah. 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 And that's probably why the mom was being like, "You go see this guy." The, like the missing guy might end up being his actual son. Yeah, I think Japanese mom. Yes. Japan family ran, Randa. <laughs> Japan family. <laughs> J- Japan family Randa. Yes. That's Kurt Russell's. Yes. And then Americans is not Kurt Russell's. The well, one in America, because it seems like Kurt Russell, the, Ru- the Russells have been Shaw. Have just been in um, in Japan. Have just remained well, in Japan this whole time. Well, it would just make it so that if he is both of their dad, then it just makes it so that yeah. actually Russell is both of their grand. Yeah, it's a bit of a Stark situation, like a Ned Stark's kind, situation. Kind of, yeah. Where like eventually we might find out that not only are these two kids, how do you have a family like that? Yeah, like these two kids are going to wind up having to find out the truth about their father, who is leading this double life. Only to probably find that they are also helping his father find out more about his son, you know? Yes. And so they all find out by the end that they are a family. <laughs> yeah. And then the question mark becomes, who is the lady in America? <laughs> who is mom in America? <laughs> this is this is the real mystery. This is... Well, we, well, who give a shit about what's going on in Monarchy? <laughs> well, we're like, like <laughs> what is the family lineage exactly? <laughs> yeah. The monster shit is, like, really fun and intriguing, and I love that side of the, of the lore, but in a way, it is much more straightforward than, like, the actual implications of what this family well, is. Well, we know where they're... I, I, like, that's the one problem with the Monarch. The storyline is like we we kind of know a lot already. Yeah, we do, and, and I and I find and so, it so they have to make the the mystery of like where did dad go the most <laughs> intriguing shit. Well, yeah, because the but the stuff of Monarch, I'm like, well, we know most of it already if you've seen the three movies they made. Yeah, and I think it's fun and interesting that they've done this because I mean, and, and you know, maybe maybe we're overcomplicating things or something, but I feel like. In in addressing the fact that, yeah, we already know a lot about Monarch at this point in time, especially, and also nobody, it's well uh, documented that no one cares about humans in any Godzilla-related property. Like, I think they've smartly created this very sort of convoluted set of just human circumstances yeah. to, like, oddly make that more engrossing and, and like, it's still drama, but it's also like convoluted enough that it kind of feels less saddled with being heavy, <laughs> you know? Yeah, but I, I think the the thing, though, is like I, I, I find the 
best brother and sister who this show started off with. Out of everyone here, they're the least, <laughs> the least interesting, interesting characters. characters. <laughs> yes. And I think they're putting their all into making the daughter the most. They're try- I think they want that to be the most interesting character, like with having the Godzilla trauma. Uh, like, and it's like easily triggered by PTSD. She's the one set up for the most character growth, you know? Uh, uh, yeah. And, and, but, but there's so many more interesting people and things that I, surrounding <laughs> them. And like the son is really not that interesting to me. See, the thing is I'm, I'm rooting for the both of them. The son, uh, the problem for me is that ostensibly the lead, the, the, the daughter whose name I also need to commit to memory she right now is the least interesting character. Oh, she's the least interesting to you. Okay. Yeah, only I because put the son above her. The, <laughs> I, I, I find her performance perhaps a bit more interesting, but the thing is, the son I feel like has just had more f- direct focus and a more autonomous plot, whereas like the things that are interesting about um, our lead so far about Kate are mostly like. Godzilla of PTSD that isn't her specifically. It's like a cool device attached to her. Uh-huh. And I don't think her performance is bad like or anything like that. It's just like, it is, at least in this episode, she felt like kind of at the bottom of the totem pole of things being focused on. Um, right. And I felt like we just spent the least, like she has that exchange with the guy in the terminal, with Tim in the terminal, and she has to evade, and there's the whole thing with the cops. And I think they're doing like a decent job as much as we joke and as much as people like to roll their eyes at, you know, acknowledging power structures and how, you know, social interactions between men and women and different races have changed. I think they're, they're like nicely kind of commenting on that stuff. But even there, I felt more for the moments between Wyatt Russell and, um, and Keiko, uh, the doctor, uh, when they're kind yeah. of getting into that versus her going to the police station, which could have been one of those very relatable situations. I imagine for a lot of people and women, especially where it's like, I am trying to seek help for an immediate threat and you're not any help, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and so, yeah, I just, I, I didn't think anything was bad about her character or or involvement in the episode it just didn't feel like they spent much on it you know yeah and i think they're the show has is kind of in a weird corner because we know what monarch is all about already yeah and this whole show with our main characters is uncovering who what monarch is yes i'm like we we know what monarch is yeah (laughs) and like i I think the show probably works best for if you've only if this had come out immediately after godzilla and kong if there was no no i don't even think you need kong skull island yeah. yeah, if it came out after the first two where we're not spending as much time with Monarch or, yeah. I don't know, like, yeah, throughout those movies, they're dealing with stuff and we're at least getting glimpses into their operation. There's that whole thing with Vera Farmiga and she's got the device and they're involved with that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, like, oddly enough, like in this recent glut of like, we need to take these popular franchises and build them out into shows like a lot of them seem really ill advised. And this to me actually does not. It's just that. And, and and that actually doesn't really bother me that much uh, of like, <laughs> I think it's funny that, yeah, it's like, where can we, something like Monarch to me seems like you could endlessly kind of dole out, you know, interesting little revelations because we only saw certain things that they're working on. So I think like there are still ways to make the shadowy organization yeah. interesting. I, um, I, I still overall find the show really fun. Yeah, yeah but I'm, it, I'm really enjoying the show. But like, it does. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, but it does when you, like, feel when you, when you step back, though, you're like, what exactly are we shining a light on here within Mark? <laughs> yeah, and it feels like if they had positioned this after Godzilla and Kong Skull Island, then you could have it be like we're finding out about Monarch, and then you know occasionally we're gonna look way up, yeah. you know, in scale, you know, for this movie's like you know Godzilla King of the Monsters or like Godzilla versus Kong, and then go back to the you know more ground level stuff, and they could develop side by side. But being that we don't live in that reality. I think this is, you know, doing a decent job in spite of that, you know? Yeah, yeah, because they're telling a conspiracy thriller right now. Yeah, and I think adding, you know... Uh, conspiracy sci-fi thriller, yeah. Yeah, totally, yeah. and and adding... This is already sci-fi, and I hadn't really thought about it, even though there's so much Godzilla already in all of the Cloverfield stuff, but adding a little bit of that timey-wimey, you know, peripheral 
sci-fi of a slightly different, more surrealist sci-fi. Sure. Just just a sprinkling of that on top of it is a nice portent for this show. Sure, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because um, I was fully expecting them to come out like, you know, somewhere else when they were in the ship. <laughs> you know, like like you were like some kind of time rift or something. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, especially because it's saw the Hollow Earth uh, teaser. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Um, but... Right now, uh, I, I'm very. It seems like when we talk about it afterward, that we're not enjoying. I guess it just leads me to the question because, like, I'm enjoying everything about like, oh, the way it's shot is great. The immediacy is very enjoyable. Yeah, and then I will get pulled into the immediate moment. Um, and maybe my mind has just been a little c- conditioned when you're doing your show called Monarch and you're building on a monster <laughs> universe for me to think about how, what its contribution is to the bigger part of the universe no, of like what new part of the universe. But in the immediacy of the moment, I will get pulled into like the threat and the perspective, like when Kentaro is in the apartment yeah. and Monarch is coming across like the worst villains of the worst yes. villains when we really know they're not actually the worst of the worst. And 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 then you got like opposing, uh, you know, tough lady person. Oh yeah, yeah, you got Maria Hill. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, and then the mom has to stall. Yeah. And that actually happened because I was like, is he gonna go in there and he's gonna like mock something up or, or get some like sure, dummy sure. paper? Like when he snuck out, I was like, oh, this is one of the rare occasions where like that actually kind of worked on me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's like the movies always make it seem like Monarch. Oh no, we need Monarch actually. Like that's what they always they're do. They're a necessary they're, they're, evil, or they're yeah, like but they're a not dubious. even that evil. They're just doing some secret government shit. But they they're always they're like, yeah caught up like, in in the pursuits of the people kind of governing them at the yeah. time. Yeah, yeah. It's so. like sure they they harbor secrets about the bigger things of these uh, titans, but. They're not really evil, you know. They're not, yeah. Like at least the movies don't make <laughs> them seem yeah. evil. Yeah, yeah. no, they yeah. they they are like a, a shadowy, faceless organization in ways that, yeah, like yeah. I think you're right. They're not evil. They're, they're like chaotic neutral, I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and so I will get pulled into like the the immediacy of what the characters are feeling a lot of the time, with um, you know, fearing for their lives and whatnot, and, and then. Am I interested in finding out what happened to the dad? Absolutely. Uh, but I am more intrigued by like, oh, yeah, what did, what happened with Kurt Russ? See, that's that's the part of it that I'm really enjoying um, is when I'm hearing like, OK, what happened with Shaw's? Like, how did he go from that to where he's being held captive? Yeah. You know, like, like resort prison. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened with because um, we saw John Goodman die in Kong Skull Island. So what happened with this family now? And how do we get, so there's like a lot of those intrigues I'm very, I'm very much invested in and I want to uncover that. Mm. I guess it's when looking at the, the bigger picture of how it factors into the legacy of monsters. It, it doesn't really do anything for me there, but I like when the monsters show up. I'm just not because it's like we know what's going on already there, obviously, right? Like we well that don't, and, don't we don't we know what's going on? Well, well <laughs> that and also we don't have Kurt Russell in the previous movies. Yeah, yeah. So it's like you know, it's it's a completely new thing that they're going to have to you know like just just conscientiously. It's still early though. Yeah, no, yeah, totally. yeah, we're so, yeah. I, I'm not doubting it, but I'm saying like the the job they have to do is to go. Oh, this guy was always involved, and here's right. why, and and maybe why you haven't heard about or seen him yet <laughs> up until now. Yeah, you know, I guess to summarize it into the simplistic form, what are they going to discover? Sure, that can lead into like a oh shit, we have unpacked something here to the lore. That yeah. we could that that has not been acknowledged yet at all in the film. How are we gonna do something as crazy as like finding Hollow Earth? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or because because we already know what's happening. <laughs> yeah, because we'll be excited about creatures, and there's a whole coterie, a whole gallery of creatures you could go for. But at the same time, that's I don't think enough to you know really propel this for a long time. Is just being like, oh, which creature is gonna be next? Yeah, you, know, you make that like a monster creature that is. 
<laughs> no, I'm I sure that's some creature you all fucking know. I have no idea. That is. Yeah, I couldn't identify it. But now I'm sitting here half the time going like, okay, are they going to make up half new sort of generic creatures for the show and then occasionally do like a famous one? Or are they all going to be referential? Yeah. Uh, but that's fun. And that's the chance to, you know, there's so many of these movies and so many creatures. That's a fun yeah. opportunity to, you know, jump into the expanded. Because, you know, not everybody has seen all of the gods Zilla. No, but as far as no. a conspiracy thriller, goes as far as uh, political intrigue. Uh, I love the music. I love the direction. Uh, I, I think there's a lot here that is really, really working for me. And in the immediate moment, I'm having a really fun time watching it. Yeah. No, and I'm I really like, enjoying this. And I like unpacking uh, the mystery for the characters. And maybe perhaps I'm getting too caught up in the bigger picture, but I also blame the show because it's it's called Monarch Legacy of Monsters or whatever the hell the sure. subtitle is called. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I think you've you've trained my. I think that sets your mind up to go to think about those things. Yeah, no, it, does, yeah. it totally does. Yeah, and 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 you know it needs it needs instead of me just going. Oh, we're going to the thing we know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for people to love it, it just needs to make some sort of impact that feels pertinent or or you know immediate or vital or fresh or something. And, yeah, and yeah, like because it's it seems focused on the family's secret. Yeah, not really the monarch secret, which is probably what the which is what the show needs. Sure. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, you know, there are monarch secrets within that, but they're not. I think, yeah, it's kind of smart not to make it like only about what are the monarch yeah. secrets, because we do know a fair amount of them. And you run into <laughs> an MCU problem where people feel like, oh, I missed something when I was watching the follow up to Godzilla versus Kong because I didn't watch their Apple TV show. Yeah. And maybe, yeah. In, yeah. And maybe in a way that is a good inroad. <laughs> if somebody happens to catch this and they haven't seen all the monster verse stuff, then they're like, oh, there's a couple movies beforehand and there's a couple movies after. Yeah. You know, maybe and I was very disappointed because the show is so much different than the movies. <laughs> sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm the curious. They're so good to the see. Are so big. And do just, we uh, do we know how many episodes this is going to be in total this season? No idea. Six to eight. Okay, because yeah, I mean, like, I'll, I'll be really curious. Like, I would be excited if this is something that can stick the landing and keep moving. Because I think of all again things to spin off into a series. This actually kind of could make sense, whereas a lot of them seem like you know, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what it needs to live up to. And I'm not necessarily sitting here with a specific set of expectations. I think mostly if they can just keep that air of, uh, you know, just foreboding mystery <laughs> and that sort of peripheral sci fi eeriness, uh, I think that'll go a long way. Yeah, man. I think there's some exciting things to come. And I feel like the dad's definitely alive. Yeah, he's got to be out there somewhere. I think he's definitely alive in Alaska. He's in Alaska. <laughs> he's just sitting on an oil tanker. A thousand percent. But yeah, overall, still really enjoying the show. And uh, I'm excited to see how it ultimately unfolds. And you know we'll definitely get some more actual Godzilla soon. But what did you guys think? Leave your thoughts down below. Be sure to uh, subscribe. Leave a like. And hey, hey. Uh, let's end with a patron of the day. Shout out. <laughs> All right, guys, since we only have um, a few days, uh, only so many days in a month, um, we got to shout out two patrons, um, but they're going to be that of sincerity. Yes. Heartfeltedness and love stuff. Love. I want to shout stuff. out Chris Wamoff Ooh. and uh, Anissa Oliva and the same one. Okay. So very recent, did a live stream. Hmm. And Chris Wamoff, who... I've thanked many times for just being the kind of human being that he is, uh, who is just, just a um, real asshole, a man for that the people. Tells it like it is. Tells it like it is, man. Nah, Sometimes you need that sweetest, tough love. Good hearted <laughs> people. Yeah, from Chris. Good and moral compass. That did, Chris. did a live stream and he contributed a five hundred dollar contribution to the stream, which is easily the most anyone has ever contributed. And here's the thing about Chris is that. Um, he, like that was more than generous, needless to say, but I know that he's also giving to other, like people who are also very much more in need than us Yeah, and, and to anyone here. And I know he's actively involved with charitable contributions in ways that are very hands on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I'm grateful that you would still take the time out and, and the money too to help throw our way. Uh, and, and in a very unexpected manner, 
you could give more if you weren't contributing to other things that really I don't see the significance of it. But you but know, you know it's your choice. could could have been a thousand is what I'm saying yeah. instead of five hundred. But sure, fine, five hundred. I'll accept that. Why not? Yeah, that goes to help pay some of these people who come here. <laughs> I guess. And uh, Anissa Oliva, mm -hmm. and last time, the time we met up with you in Santa Monica, and just Had getting to hang out with you and she did some games and stuff. Pizza. Just reminded me that you used to contribute a lot to our live streams. What happened? Yeah. I thought I reignited that. Chris is holding it down single handedly. Chris is in literally your doing so. Uh, you. Uh, you should you should be giving every i thought i invested money into the time we were out here in santa monica mm -hmm. and it would come back via massive live streams yeah and right now i'm just at a financial negative now yeah because Can't even write that off yeah, yeah this is <laughs> actually i can yeah you just, i guess you're uh, right, but, <laughs> theoretically but that's yeah. not the same as you it's contributing just, more yeah you know so um, what gives? Yeah, Anissa. Uh, but Chris, how much is there to do? In thank Texas? you for being you. But Anissa, Anissa. come Step on, the game lady. Up. What are All you? Right. You are not Chris. There cannot be that much in Texas that requires your time and hard earned dollarina. I don't get what working at hospitals. What toll does that really do? Yeah. Sometimes we have to wake up early. Rarely. Wake up early to Once do a, a while, trailer. And it's tough. And I'm telling you, man, I need my sleep. Yeah. I need my I need my twelve hours. Definitely. I need my sixteen hours. So you're not helping. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all we have to say about that's that. all we got for you, Anissa. <laughs> yeah. No. Sorry. Uh, no, I want to thank you, Anissa, because I know that we are just jesting here and that I love how I love how comfortable I am with you. Yeah. And I'm really grateful for that, that I really do feel like I can be my full, real self around you. Make jokes like that. Or um, it wasn't a joke. It was serious. No, I can make, jo make jokes like that. And um, and then have like a real conversation as well. And, and I, it's it's actually a little bit harder for me to find that more and more these days and and i and, and your spirit just sort of allows for that and oh, i'm ones. really grateful for that yeah. so thank you for thank you for being you and you have in all fairness which you guys the joke is rooted in the fact that she has contributed She's massive amounts of <laughs> in yeah. so many ways <laughs> over so much to, time well, we go live people would pressure her into just giving it such a ridiculous no, joke no. Yeah. so yeah you're covered for a few years there yes <laughs> but i mean for sheer force of love and enthusiasm and just being there for, yeah. for so many things i'm hoping this leads to more money then. oh it's sure that's so that's what you want to convert really it all about, into over uh, time but you know if you got someone hooked about getting money in a strong money. way they're like longevity so they're always here you know, Thank you. Yeah. There's is. always a stream to the rest. <laughs> <laughs> but we love you unconditionally. <laughs> and we will talk to you soon. And hopefully hang out again sometime soon. And Chris can come along. We can all get together. That would be fun. That would be the that best. That would be fun. Because you know that Chris would pay for us. Whereas he Anissa would. <laughs> would make us pay for her. That's true. Which and is, by proxy, Chris would pay for Anissa. That's just, just not fair. Anissa. Yeah, <laughs> you can't take advantage of Chris's kindness. After <laughs> after we do. We do. It's not fair. Love not fair guys. to do it. <laughs> <laughs>